got a, a guest speaker I'd love to introduce you to. Um, he's been a friend, colleague, and, and business mentor for now since day one. I remember when I first spoke to him about the business, he was driving out on a travel trip and he gave me some time and taught me a bunch of stuff about how to sell insurance. Nearly went Hall of Fame last year, has been a consistent $350,000 producer, and then now has transitioned to agency management. And this month should nearly scratch almost 2 million issue paid. Ladies and gentlemen, this is I board like member. Ladies and gentlemen, this is board member going senior board member, Mr. Joe Miller. Joe Miller, how are you doing today, buddy? I'm excellent, gotta I'm get, with you. We gotta get this in here, like. It's all good, it's just. We're good, we're just we're having just a, we're Joe just a call 200 here. of our agents learning about how to be better. You wanna say hi to Sean? I don't wanna yeah. say, we can get the whole, it's, I mean. It's great having Sean stare at us, it's good. This is Trey Honeycutt, we got Mike Schrodes here. See, this is what we're trying to do. We're on the road, trying to, trying to pour back in, take the knowledge we're making here, and I've run into Joe Miller, who's been a mentor since, basically day one and now i get a chance to introduce only you by to default him. grady just had a lot of questions hey guys. I had a ton of questions. there's mike Sh like sam mike Schrodes. hey guys this is mike Schrodes <laughs> visiting us from you're in alabama correct yeah, yeah, yeah. alabama and texas alabama. got it got to get out your got to get out your neighborhood if you want to make it big here so i got joe miller here who has been tremendous help for heck three years now so yep. i remember talking to you in my second month, you were driving yep. out through the grapevine. I didn't know what that was, mm -hmm. which means you were driving to Bakersfield from yep. Riverside. Or That's River. when we would talk. Every That's when we talk. Yeah. And, he, and then he'd lose signal and we'd talk. And he'd teach me about how to sell insurance at high level. That's yeah. what I advise you guys to do. That's a, the that's a challenge. You don't only have to listen to the person who recruited you and who recruited them and who's on our team. Joe and I have no financial benefit with each other. Not that that should be the barometer for whether or not you talk to people. But he reached out. I saw something that I could maybe offer him some... I don't know what, um, but but I but he also something like that. But I saw in him that he sold at a high level, was managing a team, and I wanted to learn from him. And so that I encourage you guys that if you start to produce and sell at a high level and have a good attitude and you don't come across complaining or whining or begging or or awkward, if you reach out to a lot of these top producers, it it's difficult to get to the top if you're a bad person. So what does that mean? That the majority of people who succeed here and in life are good people, which means they'll also turn around and help you. We have an indebtedness at FFL to help others. And that's something that I saw in Joe. I'm going to stop talking now. I'm going to introduce <laughs> Joe Miller and I'm going to let him What's share up, guys? some stuff and wisdom because he's got a ton of it. And I need to get this centered on you because you're the, that's you're the good. spotlight. And I'm going to drink this mouth right now. So say I'm excited. To people, Joe. I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me on Grady. I appreciate it. I think it was by default. Everyone else was speaking at the event. And so he was like, Hey, you want to do my call? It's like, okay, are you sure? He's like, yeah. He's like, yeah, uh, I guess so. And so I was like, okay, that's cool. I'll, I'll go on there. But yeah, me and Grady have been friends. I want to say, what event was that? Uh, Dallas? No. When did I first meet you? At Dallas Conference. Yeah. Dude, With, yeah. When Trey took me to the Rodeo Goat. Yes, that was it. I went it. there by we myself. Met... I went to the first convention by myself. So if by there's himself. events around you yep. and you don't, have, you don't know anybody, go because it's about you getting better. Yep. And then you maybe you meet a Trey and a Joe who will take you to the Rodeo Goat and you'll eat barbecue and yep. you know. That's what happened. Yeah, because I, I said, who's that guy? He's like, dude, haven't you talked to Grady yet? I was like, I don't even know who that is. <laughs> that's what I, I was like, who's Grady? He's like, dude, he's a stud. And I was like, all right, I'll talk to him. And so that that's kind of how it went. I got lunch. Yes, yeah. yes. And so, but we did talk quite often. Um, I don't know, the first year was... Uh, at least every Saturday, Saturday, because I would drive to Bakersfield every Saturday morning at like five, six in the morning, and he'd be up working. You know what I mean? So there's a there's a tip right there in itself that uh, he would wake up early and he would stay up late. I would talk to him going at five, six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I would call him on the way back and tell him how good of a day or how bad of a day I had. And he'd be like, he'd be awake. So Dude, you always sold so much. I was I just would be in awe. And that's the thing that you don't it's difficult to like tell new agents they're gonna get really good right well, like when you're in like i think you and steven at one point went like 30 for 30 or something yeah it was and you know what it's it's not that difficult a <laughs> if you know my background so a lot of you on here probably don't my background was in the military so i have no business being in sales at all to be honest with you i don't consider myself a sales guy 
I just tell the truth and let the chips fall where they may when it comes to uh, the clients in the home. So, and not only was I in the military, which doesn't make for, you know, I would say good sales folks, but also I was a cop in the military. So my disposition to be friendly uh, was something that was wanting. So I'd get there, I'd be like, you filled it out. No, I didn't. Here it is. I'm coming in. And then uh, we talk about why they're going to buy. That was it. And I just tell them the truth. So it wasn't anything special that I did. It's just, uh, I would not be here if we didn't have leads because I was not, I would be poor if I had to talk to my friends, family, neighbors. It was just a fact. I was poor before FFL, but I would have been even poorer if I had to rely on uh, networking to make money in insurance. It, it just wasn't happening. I could tell you the story of how I got introduced to this business. I bought life insurance. We just had a kid my uh, oldest seven he was uh, six months old we bought some insurance and the guy that sold me insurance it was fully underwritten by the way which is horrible i go back to that and i was like if i would have known because i could have totally been uh, denied based on you know the things that the military uh you know gave me while i was in but a good thing i guess they didn't have access to those uh databases but anyway so i bought this uh, fully underwritten insurance he said you should do insurance and i said I said no, but there was a few words before that that I can't say on here. You'll get mad at me. Um, and Sean's staring at me, so I can't say anything bad at all. So I said no, hell no, no way in hell. And then he said, well, let me buy you beer. And I said, okay, um, make it two. If two, I'll go and listen to what you have to say. And so he sat me down. This guy sat me down and told me why I should do insurance. And, and I had specific questions that I thought were going to go a different way. I said, I'm not talking to my friends and family. He's like, good. You don't have to, you can buy leads. I was like, really? Okay. And then he also, I also said, can I make money just selling the product? Because I had been, you know, approached by deals where you had to recruit and babysit a whole bunch of people to make any money. He said, you don't have to hire anybody. I said, huh? Okay. So I can just sell the product. I can make money just selling the product and I can buy leads. I don't have to talk to anyone I know. Okay, because I was a secret agent in the beginning. And he said, yeah. And I said, okay, cool. Uh, so I got started. And you know what? I worked very, very part time. I say that's one of the best things about my story is I worked part time. I worked two days a week around my wife's schedule. So when I got out of the military, my wife had a really nice job right out of the military. And I was like, ah, I'm not going to be a cop. So I'm going to do this whole uh, house husband, stay at home dad thing and go to school. And I found out very quickly that I'm not designed for that. That's, you know, a six year old or a six month old wants a lot and it's exhausting. So I learned very quickly that I needed to talk to adults and I can't just talk to this baby all the time. So I got started in insurance and I only worked two days a week, part time around my wife's work schedule because otherwise I'd be watching the baby, right? I used to, and I, you know, I got shot in the room, but what I would do is when the baby was napping, I would dial the phone and it was so uncomfortable dialing the phone that I would just, you know, anything that was in the room or in the house, I would drink. And so, cause it would take the edge off. And then I really didn't care what they said. I just, I just dialed the phone and uh, <laughs> drank what was in the house. My wife would come home and she's like, why is there no alcohol in the house? I, cause she has a stressful job. She's an air traffic controller and she made really good money. And she's like, why is there no beer? Why is there no alcohol in the house? And I said, I don't know. And she's like, it's just you. And the baby. So the baby's not drinking. It has to be. I was like, I'm just dialing this phone trying to make appointments. And it was very uncomfortable <laughs> for me. It was super uncomfortable. I'm just telling you what. And so, and I'm used to being confrontational when, you know, in the military, being a cop, you know, I'm, I can handle confrontation, except in, in the military, I had a gun and a badge. So when we got into a confrontation, I could make them do what I wanted. So these people on this phone, they, when I would call them and say, I'm coming over, they say, no, I didn't fill out nothing, you know, go pound sand and hang up on me. And that would just like my blood pressure would just start going up. I'm like, oh, I have on this card where you live, I'm calling you back, you know, and so just to take the edge off, that's what I did. Anyway, so fast forward, I would just book appointments and go see people for the for the sole purpose of just talking to another adult. Honestly, I would go, I would sit down with you. I'm here. You know, I guess I'm supposed to talk to you about insurance. I had no structure in the home, none of that. And so what happened was in the beginning, a lot of people would just say, uh, I, I don't, you know, buy on the first, first meeting. We don't make decisions right away. I like you, you know, but it's me, you know, I got to think about it. It was, I got to think about it on a regular one after one after one after another. And then what happened was, is uh, Trey Honeycutt and Andrew Taylor said, Hey dude, uh, you have to go to Georgia. And I was like, I 
I don't want to go to Georgia. There's nothing in Georgia that I want to go see. Nothing against Georgia. I just didn't want to go. I was, I was fine where I was. And they said, you're going to this event in, in Atlanta, it was. And so I was like, all right. So I went. And after that event, so you know what Grady said is events make money and events make believers. You leave an event, it, maybe you don't have all the, the pieces to the puzzle, but you do, you are 10 foot tall and bulletproof. So when you when you go back out into the population <laughs> where the masses are and you have to uh, to do these, these things that are very simple, they're easy to do, but they're easy not to do, okay? So when I came back from that event, I wanna say I called every single person I could get back on the phone that told me no in the home, or they didn't say no, no one said no. They just said, uh, I got to think about it or whatever it was. It was always nice no's, right? I called all of them back and I, I just figured out a way to get back in the home. And when I went back in the home, I sold every single person that I had no sold basically, who told me, I want to think about it from what I learned at that event. And so that really that really propelled me forward because I had locked out a county in Alameda County up in the Bay before I knew what that meant. You know, they're like, you got to buy these leads and their X dollar amount. And I was okay with that because like I said, I didn't want to talk to my friends, family, and neighbors. So I did that. And when I sold those deals and I got deposits in my bank account, uh, it was, I want to say it was like six or seven grand. And literally that was what I would have spent on leads for the next six months. And so it didn't. And so at that point, I was like, I'm playing with the house's money. Let's do this. I still had the problem dialing the phone. So <laughs> the alcohol was still going missing uh, while my wife was at work. And um, but at the end of that year, working two days a week part time around my wife's work schedule, I ended up issue paying 132 grand. And for me, you know, <laughs> here we are six, seven years later. And, and the numbers that are that are here are just amazing. People are having a lot more success than that. But for me, making 30 grand a month in the, or 30 grand for the year in the military to make it 132 grand for the year part time, I still didn't know what I was doing. Like I said, I was just going to meet another other adults to talk to them versus a six month old. Right. And so that was, that was just huge for me. And that's kind of where the, this all took off. You know, the first year when we got our, you know, our, our kind of our taxes back and seeing everything, I was like, wow, this, my wife asked me if I was doing anything illegal. And I was like, I might be, but I got, <laughs> but I got this license that says that I'm, you know, I'm legit. So let's keep it rolling. And uh, uh, the next year it went up from there. It was like 130. Then it was like 160, something like that. And then two years into the business, uh, two and a half, actually, uh, we moved from the Bay to Southern California where my parents were having health issues and we had another child. And so if I was having trouble with one, uh, two was out of the question. One of us would have, would have, you know, perished, you know, the, the six month year old would have, he would have went out into the traffic. I could have had a problem like a stroke. And then the baby who knows wouldn't have been able to fend for themselves. But uh, so my wife was like, how am I going to do this? You're working and you, you want me to take care of the kids and work. I was like, no, you're just going to stay home. So I went full time. I was like, it was a little over two and a half years in the business. I went full, full time. And that's when uh, Trey and Andrew said, hey, dude, um, you need to hire people. I said, remember, that was one of the conditions. I'm not hiring anybody. I'm not recruiting anybody. Not because I don't like that. I just, I didn't want to babysit. I didn't want to deal with other people's stuff. You know, we deal with a lot of people's stuff, Some. being managers and whatnot. But um, uh, I got started doing that. And and fast forward, here we are. Last month, uh, FFL Freedom did 1.3 million. 1.3 million. And that's nothing that I did. It was, it was kind of ridiculous. I actually was distracted moving from California to, to Texas and um, the team grew. So that's a, that's a, a nugget right there. Get yourself out of the way and your team will grow. So uh, any questions you have for me? That's I mean, where that, we're was, at. that was, that was awesome. Thank you so much for going through all that. I think it's perspective for a lot of people to see that, you know, no, you, you weren't some crazy successful car salesman nope. or you didn't have a, a roofing team you nope. didn't come from the industry you just saw an opportunity did what people said buy leads got yep. around the right people went to events to get better and then started selling and yep. Gabe became consistent at it put a little pressure on yourself taking your wife and oh yeah that was fun taking your we taking your wife out of the out of the work so yeah so so just so you know my wife was making a six-figure income uh in the fa making really good money and the benefits and all that stuff. So it was a very big deal for her to resign and, and stay at home with the kids. That was a very big deal. I think that's when everyone started taking what I was doing serious. They were like, your, your wife just resigned 
and they kind of were they had like this fear in their eye that like how are you going to pay for everything how are you going to pay for your family and your kids and your overhead and all these things and that's that's really what did it you know she pressure pressure does that pressure pressure does that so so let's transition from like what your expertise now would be which is kind of building an agency and so what are things that maybe you see you know, this has got a couple hundred people on here. What do new agents that you, what, how do you coach new agents? I'm just going to open that up okay. to however, you know, however you want to address that. It's going to be so, different the way that we all do, but I wanted them sure. to kind of. So something I just, I just recently picked up that I think is, is going to be a big game changer. Anyone who's serious about this business and is going to go through the grind. The first year is a grind. It's going to be messy and it's going to be ugly. The, the best thing you can do for your success is to document it. Is to is to have people watch you go through that, um, you know that mess while you're doing it. Because what you'll do is people are watching you if you put it out there. If if you're a secret agent, no one knows what you're going through. But if they know what you're going through, you your credibility goes up. So they know, man, he stuck it out. He was selling, getting kicked in the teeth. He wasn't making any sales. He was recruiting people that were quitting. Whatever it is, uh, document it in your first. Your, your grind year, your grind year is you getting good at selling or you getting good at taking orders, however you want to look at it and, and making six figures, writing business on your own pen, but also building that agency because zero to 150 vice president, that's the grind. That's the grind. That's pushing the boulder up a hill. That's, you know, <laughs> that's the hardest part. But if you document it and have people actually seeing what you're doing, you'll attract the right people to your business and, and and what I mean by attract people to your business, you can recruit the cold market recruiting, all those things, but the people that already know you, like you, and trust you are watching, right? And those are going to be the, the, the building blocks, the leaders of your agency to take you from 150 to 500. So if you don't document the, the, the grind, you're not going to get those leaders in place. You're just going to arrive. Here I am. I sold 300 grand, 400 grand, 100 grand, whatever it is, and I'm a VP and no one knew what you went through to get there. And so what I say is document it so people can see it happening and you'll attract them so that when, uh, you know, when you wanna go from 150 to 500, those leaders will have already been in the business. They will appear, okay? And then you only have to double to go to a million. So that 150, the grind year that sucks, you just have to document it. And that's only if you're serious though. The ones that say, oh, I'm just gonna sell and I'll recruit once I have success. Well, you're, you're setting yourself up for failure. So, oh, I'm only going to share this once I have success. But when you have your job, the job you don't like, you're you're posting stuff online on social media, how traffic sucks, my boss sucks, the pay sucks, my life sucks. Well, you know, if things suck, you just post it online, but here, and you'll see that it won't suck no more, right? Let's see how many times I can say that in one sentence. But that's the biggest change that we've done is anyone who's serious, we say, hey, you know, people, you already know a ton of folks. I don't necessarily need you to go out there and try to expose them to the business. You're going to expose them to the business indirectly, indirectly by putting this out there online, by putting this out there on whatever social media. And I, I can't stand social media, just so you know, you know, I you know, Facebook, Instagram. I just learned about Instagram. I didn't know there was something called Instagram. So I'm on there now. Um, but Facebook, Instagram, and then LinkedIn, I guess LinkedIn is a thing. Um, I heard of LinkedIn, but I'm on all those things. I don't know them. I don't like them, but I'm there. And people are reaching out that were like, you know, you never reached out to me. I was like, uh, I'm sorry. You know what I mean? So don't make the same mistakes I did. And don't be a secret agent. Just put it out there while it's in, while you're grinding while you're grinding. After you've already arrived, they're like, you didn't have to dial the phone. You didn't have to get, you know, uh, no show two hours away from home. You didn't, you didn't get hung up on, you didn't have chargebacks. You just, you just always been successful. Like seriously, that's, um, that was the biggest deal. I'd, I'd say that's that we've been doing for new agents. It's good. I, um, I think that, that people don't, recruit more war market. I would say it this way, actually, war market's the hardest to recruit because mm -hmm. people are afraid of being judged. And what Joe's commenting on here is to do some sort of a documentation, tell, tell some story, I started this new business, et cetera, um, is a very successful way to go about it. And I look at our own business. I, ironically, Jordan Lowry is a friend from a previous business. Um, Julius Gilger was a referral from a friend in a previous business. Um, Gabriel Hill is my brother-in-law, my wife's brother. 
uh, Jamie is a friend from a previous business, Brad Okazin, who brought me Andrew, who introduced Andrew Hubush to this, is a friend from a previous business. And it's you look at like my whole business. There's like three million of volume that are more market people that I knew, right? That mm -hmm. like that I probably never would have reached out to if I hadn't been marginally public about what I was doing that they kind of reach out to me or you just kind of, they see continual good habits. And so that's kind of what our message to you is that, you know, we always talk about, you know, Craigslist, ZipRecruiter, Indeed, Facebook job posts, cold market recruiting, go, go, go hire an agency, yada, 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 yada. Everyone wants to go get 20 agents from some company that has low comp. I got it. We're doing that just fine. But there's a lot of people in your network that probably like trust and respect you already. That well, could I'll, be, I'll that tell could you the team, this. the team, Stephen E, Warren Market. Jacob Memphis War Market, Trey Honeycutt War Market. I mean, Trey called me up and said we were both working, or we were both kind of in insurance for a minute. And he said, "Hey, I'm going to go where I got my license wasn't here, but I never did anything there. I just got my license there." And then I called up Trey and said, "Hey, I'm getting into insurance. You think I'd be good at it?" Because he was my buddy, right? I, he's like, "Dude, I have my license too, and I'm going to go look at this company." I'm like, "I'm in. Where, where are we going?" And he said, I'm going to go look at this family first life thing, but you can't tell nobody about it. That was how it was in the beginning. You can't tell nobody about it. I was like, okay. And so we came over warm market. Uh, Steven Yee, he's at, you know, I think he's over eight for the month right now. He'll be a board member very shortly. Uh, most of you know, and like uh, Steven Yee and then also Trey Honeycutt, all warm market. Jacob Medford, he's a, he's a SVP. He is really close to going EVP warm market. My next line, uh, Mac Agabor, 60K producer, warm market. And there's a lot of folks down in the organization that are warm market. And, you know, I would say I didn't really try to, uh, you know, recruit them. Steven, I had to recruit twice because we had, you know, we're buddies, but we butt heads all the time. So I had to, I had to recruit him twice <laughs> into the business, but I'm glad I did is, you know, the best, I always say the best agent I got. Right. He's a stud. Yep. He's a stud. So recruit so, your weaknesses too. It's good. That's a good line. So, I mean, we're talking about, um, the business building component and this is essential for you guys to understand that, you know, Joe, Joe Miller spent how many, you know, just ballpark. How many nights a week did you miss dinner with your family? You know what? I, <laughs> that's why I'm not a, a hall of fame producer. Why don't you just rub it in? All right. So, so, so I was, always just a, just active in the answer. field just a quick the quick answer, answer is uh, two nights was always and then i would work probably four days Got so it. i would two nights and because you know it was big for me i have three small children and so i i like to at least the kids would see me and i'd put them to dinner or put them to bed and whatnot but uh, i always work the weekend they're five years straight i never missed a saturday Sorry. and i would wake up at four and then I'd be home at 12 midnight. So Saturdays I gave up, not that I care, Saturday is just another day, but I always had Sundays off unless I was on a travel trip, like a flying, uh, but I, I kept Saturday or Sunday to go to church and with the family, but Fridays and Saturdays, I worked every week for five years. You know why so, I loved running Saturdays? No traffic. Yeah, no traffic. And you drive around enough. Book more appointments. You get a day with no traffic. It's like a blessing. You're like, I'm definitely selling today. I'm getting there faster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can stay in the day quicker if you have some no-shows, but it's a, it's one of those things. Yeah. Saturdays was a must. If you're not selling Saturdays. You, I could probably tell by your volume. Correct. You can't hundred percent without question. Yeah. So what I'd like to just kind of talk about here for, for two seconds as we close out with Joe is that the importance of having a conscious effort towards building a business as well. Do we want you to become excellent producers? Of course. We want you to make a lot of money selling insurance a hundred percent. Do we want you to create a, a renewal streak? Do we want you to get that back end months 10, 11, and 12 when you start to get that, that, uh, the back end money. And by month 13, you're giving yourself a 25% raise. I mean, how incredible is that? As long as you keep selling consistently, all of a sudden months 13, you're getting all of those months, 10, 11, and 12, those, that, that three months that you didn't get added on top. And it's just, it's an amazing raise. You start to get in the business. And so that's important to look at, but you also have to have perspective that if we're going to, if we're going to, it wouldn't, it would be unfair or selfish of us to not teach you about the whole business. And the whole business involves that your responsibility within this entity is to not just become a great producer, but to also become a great introducer. And you must share share this business with people because what will happen though, is if you become a great producer, what's going to happen? You're going to make a lot of money. Congratulations. You're going to level up your lifestyle. Amazing. You're going to 
buy a bigger home. You're going to buy nicer cars. You're going to, you know, start to save some money. You're going to put your kids in better classes, which will be fun. All the things that you get to do for your family with more money. The challenge is, is if you start to make more money and then something happens to you and you cannot produce, God forbid you get hurt or an accident or a fat or a child gets sick or a parent gets sick and you've got to go house, burns, to, down. house burns down house burns down. Maybe we should, we'll close with that. Um, something happens and you cannot produce now for a week or a month or months. You've now gone from a highly paid insurance producer to someone who's unemployed. And so to understand that it's not just becoming great at producing, it's becoming great at introducing as well, because as you start to introduce this to other people and you become a great provider of training and a great person who can answer questions about the think about it and the in-home and what metformin is and how, and how diabetes works, then you'll be someone who can guide and coach other people. And then thus, guess what? You deserve a 5% override. It's not a bad situation to be in earning 5% for teaching people about diabetes. You teach a lot of people about diabetes? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or a certified diabetes specialist. That's right. Frankie Femi is here, a certified diabetes specialist. So as you start to progress with this business, is becoming good at, at being a good guide for others, is then thus what puts you in a position as you start to grow your team from sales manager, senior sales manager, get your logo, VP, start to earn your bonus, SVP, EVP, congratulations uh, to those that are about to cross that threshold, board member and beyond, the income that you can create, the lasting income you can create by teaching others is something that puts you far more from someone who has the fear of something, God forbid, happening in your life that pulls you out of the field that then you now can't make money and, and pay for the lifestyle which you've ascended to is to someone that has protection around them. I used to joke about, Chantel used to always like, she for like two years was trying to buy me disability insurance on my voice. She's like, if you can't go set, like what if something happens? What if you get hurt? She's like, you need Are disability you like insurance. Testing your dinner here, like, so, yeah. know, what's going on here? So, uh, so, to, so to conclude, I'll pass it back to you is just to understand that guys, that like this is the finest opportunity for people that want to get paid well for working hard but don't shortchange yourself by solely thinking that your only job here is to sell insurance your job is also to teach people how to sell insurance and that will protect and take care of your family forever well i'll just end well it's hard for me to end it's a it's always one other thing so leverage income what's the difference between you and someone who's very wealthy is leverage right we have the upfront advanced commissions which is awesome Right, we have the back end renewal money, which is awesome. Which is like, I'm not a musician, I'm not an actor, I'm not a movie star, so I was never going to have royalty income. Right, so I knew uh, the active income was great, which is awesome here. The back end money, which is also great, that I would never have anywhere else. But the other thing is the leveraged income. The the J, J Paul Getty, he he figured out how to get oil out of the ground, right? And instead of just getting rich himself, he taught other people how to get the oil out of the ground. And he said, I'd rather have 1% off the efforts of 100 than 100% of my own effort. Why? Because if he died, his income would go to zero. But if one of those other uh, folks, something happened, his income would go down to 99. And so uh, what I want for you to have leverage in your life. Leverage is everything. And so you don't wanna be selling insurance forever. Right? You, do you want to have to make dials forever? Do you want to get no showed forever? If you do, great. You're like a machine. Yeah, there's you get you should get checked out because <laughs> that's that's not right. I think I'm good. We're good. Do you, you we do you, do you feel comfortable sharing the story oh, sure. that you mentioned for two yeah, seconds? Yeah, so so I'm pretty cynical now. Uh, so me and my wife and my family we Give picked some up dates. Yeah. All right, so we picked up. So 2020 was an amazing year. Uh, I run most of my business out of California and it, the, the whole dang state was shut down, right? And so, but we were cranking it. It was great, money was good, everything was awesome. But then uh, was it August of last year, I kind of had to slow down, my mom passed away, right? So kind of out of the blue, my mom passed away. And, uh, and then there was, I was just thinking, well, why am I staying in California, right? I love California, the weather, we don't even want to talk about Texas weather because that just there was a tornado last night yes and i have a picture i'll post it on facebook i did post it on facebook you follow me you'll see it but uh so we were like all right where are we going to move and i was like texas let's move to texas no income uh state tax and i'm looking at you know making really good money here so i was like hey that's a great opportunity let's move to texas we moved to texas so i had to get out of the field while i was transferring my license right in december so november 31st or november 30th whatever however many days are in november i don't even know um, 30. There you go. So you don't have to be smart to make money here. And so I didn't run in December because I was moving to Texas. And when I got to Texas, I got my keys of my new house in, uh, what was it? The, I want to say the 18th. 
December. The, of December. The 19th, our stuff got delivered, it stayed in boxes. And then like the 20th, uh, we hired a painting contractor to paint the house. And we left to Long Island to go visit family for Christmas, the, the grandparents, right? And um, we get there, we land, we we go to sleep, we wake up the next morning and our phone is just, it's just blowing up from a ring, was it ring central? Or ring. ring. Ring, the ring, right? Ring. Yeah. We're like, what the heck? Door ajar, motion, motion, motion. We're like, what's going on here? And so we we had one neighbor that we knew and we called them. They called us back like two hours later. We're like, were we robbed? And then she was like, no, I think there was a fire. We're like, oh, okay, how bad could it be? You know, whatever. And then the picture started rolling in from the fire department. We're like, holy crap, the whole house was burned out while we were gone, right? And so uh, so we, <laughs> needless to say, that really ruined our, our festivities, <laughs> Christmas, right? And so we came back and then we were Airbnb in it and uh, temporary housing for you know a few months. We just moved in three weeks ago to a new house uh, which is amazing, but you know, I was supposed to be hitting the ground running January one in in Texas. You know, get in the office, all those things, and I what really wasn't able to. Right? What do you do when you know your cars are are uh, are stuck in the garage because the house burned down and now you can't get the cars out? What do you do when do they melt? No, they actually are fine. They they were able to get them just just fine. No, the but, house, just so we're clear, the roof burned through. Like. The whole gone. thing, like, like everything, like a movie. 95 percent of our stuff gone. So we only had our suitcases that we went to New York with, right? And that was it. And you'd be surprised the things that you have in your house that you don't think about every day that you have to then buy when it's gone. It's it's nuts. Like, you know, like it's just it's interesting. So um, the whole point of that was while we were dealing with that, my business grew right? The business grew month over month, December, January, February, March. The team has grown every single month and, your and my income has gone up and I haven't been selling. I haven't sold since, since then. I haven't sold because the team grew so fast and so big that I don't have to, to produce anymore. Now I can just focus on the things that I like to do, which is funny. I didn't want to recruit. And now I love to recruit. I love to help people have the same opportunity that I have and Grady has and a lot of the other folks uh, here who've taken advantage of it. So, um, you know, I, I went out and seen Sean in Florida. And the first thing I said was, dude, uh, yeah, it sucks. The house burned down. Me and my family are fine, but we didn't have to think about money at all. Like not even a little bit. Not even a little bit. It takes a while for insurance to give you money, right? From when your house burning down, because that's why you have homeowners. But uh, we didn't have to think about money at all. How much is the Airbnb? Didn't matter. We needed a place to live, right? How long are we going to be there? It doesn't really matter. We need a place to live. It's that simple. And then you have to buy things, right? You have to buy, you know, we, and it, Texas has been cold. So all we were doing was buying cold uh, winter clothes, right? Because California is shorts and t shirts. And so we were underprepared for uh, the Texas winter. Um, and so now, um, but things are great. We bought a new house and it's amazing. And uh, it's huge. It's actually, that's something else about insurance. So they, they don't let you just, you know, equal. You have to spend the money or they take it. They keep it. I was like, we'll spend it. And so I'm like, all right, we'll spend it. So where we were, you know, buying a certain uh, amount of a house, so we had to level up because of the insurance money. They just keep it if you don't spend it. So we're like, all right, we'll spend it. And so we got a, a huge house and Grady has uh, seen it. I, I, I show everybody I can and I'm like, look at this. This is amazing. But if it wasn't for FFL and, and the team growing, you know, I would have had to leave my family, uh, you know, in Airbnbs with this traumatic event with no stuff to go out and sell insurance policies, which is awesome. That right? you could do that. That I could do that, but I didn't have to because I built a team. That's it. Joe, thank you so much for coming on. Appreciate your yep. time, your wisdom, your background, your knowledge, and your passion for the, for the company. Thank you, buddy. I just want to trade up for that pin right there. Okay, they're, they're, this is a good one. Air, oh, I can't even say the Air Force more. pin right here. But, uh, but that's a nice one. Thank you.